Welcome to Collector Guys. I've come here to the sands of Africa itself to bring you a unique story. It's about a toy soldier set, maybe unlike any other. It combines both the history of a real life military unit and the Hollywood stories of the past. Of course, based in Africa, I can only be talking about the French Foreign Legion. And this is Britain's Detail Foreign Legion. The French Foreign Legion is one of the most famous military units in all of history. It is made up of both French nationals and other men from across the world who have joined up and agreed to fight in the name of France. The Legion has existed for nearly 200 years and fought in conflicts across the globe. Foreigners were encouraged to join the Legion, change their names, and forget their sullied history. Good men fought next to thieves, gentlemen fought alongside rogues. But this unit was only for the toughest of men. For Legion units were sent to the worst places, suffered hard, and fought even harder. The Legion is a big part of the proud history of France. However, the Legion did not traditionally fight in France itself. They were mainly sent to protect French interests in places like Africa, Mexico, and Asia. And the Foreign Legion still exists today. They are a modern, well-trained, and elite combat force. But out of all the military conflicts in history, why did Britons choose to do the Foreign Legion versus Arabs? Well, the movies, especially Bo Jess, seems to be the reason. Bo Jess captured the public's imagination and was popular all over the world. In fact, it was so popular that they made and remade it at least five times in 56 years. Why was it so popular? It was a great story that showed the Legion's spirit. Tough men that took on fights where they were vastly outnumbered by savage foes. Scenes like this of them marching across the terrible African desert perfectly captured the famous Legion phrase, March or Die. The movies also popularized the idea that the Legion was a place where men could run from their past and disappear into the ranks. The team at Britain's wanted to turn those great film sales into great toy sales. The detail Foreign Legion were introduced in the 1975 catalog and lasted until 1978, a short but glorious run. Britons chose to name the set Foreign Legion, not French Foreign Legion. Did some of that old English-French rivalry influence this decision? Like all of their detail sets, with the exception of those of World War II, the Foreign Legion set consists of six infantry figures and six mounted figures. And as a bonus, they got their classic support. Quick note, almost all of these foot figures are my original figures from the 1970s, and so they are showing their wear. Britain's Norman Silman was the sculptor of all the Foreign Legion figures. The set was made up of six standing figures, sword and pistol, rifle above head as if stabbing at an opponent, Bugle and Pistol, which makes you think of the main character in Bo Jess. Kneeling Shooting Rifle. Standing with Rifle, as if marching or on guard. And Standing Shooting Rifle. For me, Standing Shooting Rifle is one of the most dynamic figures in the entire detail line. Five of the men in the set are legionnaires from the ranks and all in the same uniform. Sky blue coat, white pants, chest straps, and Sahara kepi, black boots, ammo box and visors, brown guns, silver bayonets, and tan flesh tone for their hands and faces. This adds up to the base blue plastic color and five painted on colors, the detail standard. It is a little surprising that Britons did them in the bright sky blue and not the more historically accurate Legion dark blue, but it was the 1970s and they probably wanted the colors to pop. Three of the soldiers have glued on plastic packs. The other two and the officer do not. The blue plastic for the Foreign Legion came in two tones, a baby or powder blue and a sky or teal blue. The difference is slight and many people barely notice it. Experts tell me the powder blue came first, which makes sense because that is what was used for the Herald Foreign Legion figures, which Britons put out earlier. Plus the other shade of blue appears in many of the later detail figures, for example, some in the Farm series. The officer wears red pants and red on his kepi. He is armed with a standard detail sword and a pistol. The end of this one is missing in action. In the movies, this would have been the cruel officer that relentlessly drives the men. 
It's hard to determine exactly what model the Legionnaire's rifle is supposed to be. Historical accuracy never seemed to be a Britain's priority. But it is probably the bolt action LaBelle, a Legion staple at this time. Five of the mounted foreign Legion figures wear the same uniforms, and the six is another officer. They include Officer with Pistol, he wears red pants and red on his kepi. Legionnaire with sword at his side. Legionnaire. Legionnaire with sword behind head. Legionnaire with sword above head. and Legionnaire with sword at side and mustache. The Legionnaire with his sword above his head is odd because his sword is part of his mold and not a plug-in sword like the others. It would be interesting to know why he is different from the rest, but the answer may be simple. Britons always look to cut down on labor. The arm is very straight, so perhaps it could easily be molded in one piece together with the sword and save labor. The other mounted figures that have plug-in sabers use the same sword as the Napoleonic figures. Collectors often confuse Legionnaire with Legionnaire with sword at side with mustache, but they are different figures. The Mounted Legion uses the same base horse as detailed Cowboys, Indians, Napoleonic Cavalry, and later the Apaches, Mexican Cowboys, and 7th Cavalry. The color of the saddlecloth always appears as red in the catalogs for all the Foreign Legion mounted figures, and that may have been the way they were sold, even though half of our examples here are on blue cloths. Taking a page from the movies, Britons did give the Legion some important support, a Gatling gun. This would have been very helpful in fighting off their many foes. It comes with an operator and another officer, and actually fired small metal balls. Interestingly, in catalogs, sometimes the officer is facing the soldier firing and has his sword under the barrel, and other times he is found facing away from the soldier. But it's doubtful that they ever released the version with the officer facing away from the soldier. Occasionally, you will find this officer on his own. This would have been done later by a collector, and was never released this way by the factory. The Foreign Legion were always on the green painted bases that became the detail standard. These stands were actually one of the keys to the detail line's success. They were made of Mazak and do not rust. Plus the figures can stand almost anywhere. It's a little strange that they use the green painted bases since the tan base that Britons used with the 8th Army and Africa Corps would have been better for men in the desert. There are not many variations, although as mentioned above, all the figures did come in two slightly different colors of blue. Also, occasionally the mustaches are missing from the inventory. If they are there, sometimes they're done in black, like the boots, and sometimes they are done in brown, like the rifles. And the Gatling gun can be found in two tones, a yellowish gold and a silvery white. The figures capture the hard-fighting, desperate men of the Legion. All are fighting, except for the single man in the famous marching pose. For enemies, Britain chose the men who fought them in the popular films, Arab warriors. They had six warriors on foot and six mounted, and no other support. The Arab warriors were well designed and made an impressive looking foe. Neither the Legion or Arabs came with a standard or flag bearer, which was a little unusual for detail sets representing this general time period. Like the rest of the detail sets, you could have bought them individually, in cases, or from counter boxes. Besides being sold as single figures, the Foreign Legion were featured in several box sets, often with their Arab foes. The figures hold up pretty well over time, however the white can get dirty, as can be seen on these figures, which were heavily played with, and the backpacks were only glued on so they can come off and be missing. But overall, the sculpting is very good and really captures the desperate fighting the Foreign Legion would be involved in. One thing that is great about the set is that the poses work well if you imagine them fighting out in the desert, and equally well if you position them fighting from a fortress. And the Foreign Legion cavalry is well done and very dynamic. And don't forget, the details Foreign Legion can also be used to fight their most famous real battle, Cameroon. You can defend a hacienda from Mexican nationalists, like on April 30th, 1863, where 68 Legioners fought 3,000 Mexican troops. You can even use the Mexican cowboys as the Mexican troops. On that day, all the Legionnaires were killed but the last three, who charged the overwhelming Mexican forces with nothing but their bayonets on empty rifles. Epic.
Later, both the Foreign Legion and Arab molds were sold to a company in Argentina called DSG, and they still make them today in many additional colors and variations. So, when you're ready to buy, make sure you know what you're getting. The Britain's Detail Foreign Legion, an excellent set. Want to see them in action? Click this link to see the Foreign Legion fight their detail Arab foes. Thanks for watching Collector Guys. Did we miss something? We appreciate your comments and shares. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And surround yourself with the things you love.